Hey guys, and welcome back to the 1v1 podcast. I am your host, Vladis, and today I have a returning champion <laughs> guest. Champion. He's, he's going three for three. Uh, <laughs> Suck it, Red Beard. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally waiting for that. <laughs> oh god uh i have my boy zelen and thank you so much dude for coming on such short notice i just had a couple of my guests have some family issues another one just hasn't got back to me so i do have new guests that i'm trying to get it's just sometimes <laughs> right. i run into these situations to where things happen life happens you, you know, know it's understandable and, no, life does happen you know vlad I, I know a lot of people out there they say that we throw around words like hero or savior like we throw them around too much but I don't, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I'm really stepping in to save you here. So, yeah, you know. <laughs> I do agree. I do agree. So, um, no, I'm, I'm glad to be back, man. It's it's always a good time. And, and it's it's crazy but between between the, the MMO space, or you could go super, super uh, specific, the Ashes space or right. the MMO space or the gaming space. Like there's just always stuff to talk about. So, I mean, I could just hop on here for an hour and just <laughs> ramble on about whatever pretty much any time. So, I'm excited. Let's do it. I know. We do it all the time in the Discord anyway. This exactly, is just, exactly. uh, uh, I guess, like a, phys- like a virtual one-on-one, whatever you want to call a it. A virtual live, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about literally breaking news, which I never do breaking news, but, I mean, I think this is kind of a big deal. Uh, okay. Greg Street. Um, he was not the lead game designer, but he was overlooking the entire MMO project at Riot, stepped down. Um, basically, kind of summarizing in general, there was some family things that happened uh, last year, mm-hmm. and he basically wants to put his family front and center. Uh, he's still going to be on, uh, like he's still going to be a developer, but he's right. going to be kind of stepping down the project. But he says um, that the the MMO is in good hands. And it's in it's it's the right time to hand over the reins for the next phase. Uh, I plan to stay in game development, and I have a number of exciting opportunities pre- presented to me already. And I will be with you all playing the right MMO when it comes out. Um, oh wow! So I'm just curious. Like, um, there was another tweet from Mark Millet, or M- I think he was the lead game designer, and he mentioned that. The game is going to, it's a long way out is what he put in caps, okay. long way out. So, um, it's pretty much what I thought. Like we still have probably 2026 plus, like maybe for a release mm-hmm. of this MMO, mm-hmm. if it actually even sees the light of day, which it is very good chance it might. Um, but again, things happen in game development. You know what I mean? Just yeah. like the, um, yeah. the project that wow did back in the 2010s which ended up becoming overwatch which is not an mmo but it was uh the uh project titan code name back then Mm -hmm. um that ended up falling through so i'm just curious to know your thoughts on this like what do you think if this is a big deal not a big deal i mean god it's hard to really say if if it's a big deal or not because we're not we're not there. I'm not in there. How, how right. involved was he? Did he do a good job of passing it off to the next person? Or did he just leave on the lark? Or, you know, just out. I'm out, you know, right. um, all of those types of things. So it's hard to, to really clarify, like, if it's a good thing or if it's a bad thing. Um, it's definitely a thing. It's something that happened. Right. Um, but just in general, I have to believe on track record. Because, you know, they, they say the best indicator of future uh behavior is past behavior right on on track record this is going to be a good good game like right. riot as they just they make good they games. just been killing it for yep. what 15 years or something um yeah so i i'm sure it's gonna be great i'm excited to actually know what the hell this mmo is gonna be can, can we get so like just a little bit of details please <laughs> you know uh but yeah i um you know it's, it is what it is man the guy i i I will always applaud people who take a step step back for their family. Always. Right. Because I think you should, if, if, it, if it gets to that. No, absolutely. I mean, it, for me, like as a longtime WoW person, you know, Greg Street was like the lead game designer from, I think, like 2010 to 2014. I could be wrong on those years, but he, he was for a good period of time or a good chunk of time. He was lead game designer for WoW. Um, and there was a love-hate relationship with how he operated as a lead game designer of World of Warcraft. He had 
he invented the dev water cooler blue posts which basically discussed the reasoning behind certain changes in the patch notes and you know um he was very vocal to the wow community as to why he did certain changes and some people like those changes other people did not like those changes but he always sure. engaged in conversation which is what any people want you know what i mean right and Absolutely. um i think you know again he wasn't he's not the lead game designer for the right mmo but i to me i i, can, I consider it a blow for the project um but i i honestly feel like I agree with you. I think it's a little too early to tell this isn't doom and gloom for the right MMO. This mm -hmm. isn't anything like, oh my God, it's all over now. Like, I, I don't think so. And I think because of the way stuff was worded, I still think this is super early development. It's yes. almost like if we were to take it, you know, because I know the majority of people listening is like Ashes of Creation pilled, right? right um, this right. is like if, you know, Stephen Sharif decided to take a step back in like 2019 you know what i mean like or I, earlier yeah like well like I think 2017 from, tw tw <laughs> 2017 to 2019 i think was a good uh maybe a poor reference i don't know maybe, maybe you maybe you are right maybe yeah. uh, 2017 2018 but the point is, is they had a lot already set even in 2017 they already had the premise uh a lot of stuff that was already kind of cre pre-created because of the um what was it the pathfinder uh campaign that they kind of based right ashes of creation off of um right. so again there's probably a lot of stuff that was already pre-established for the right mmo but again these these mmos take so long to yep. basically come out and to do so i feel like there's just a lot that that just needs to be done and so mm -hmm. I, I do want to talk about another kind of more recent I wouldn't call this breaking news, but something that's been going on right now is this whole PAX Day MMO that's popped mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Now, did you get a look at that trailer that came out recently? Uh, absolutely. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I know we. I've watched Re uh, Rive Genesis video on it. I know you probably have seen it already, too. Oh, um, yeah, absolutely. I'm just curious. Like, what are your thoughts on that MMO? Like, what do you think of it? Um, Looks cool. Yeah. Obviously, it's beautiful. Right. Um the way that they seem to be making the world with that kind of a procedural generation it's not like a handcrafted world at least that's what i understand yeah um would allow you to have a massive world i mean you could be as you know as big as you want it to be basically right um my biggest thing and this is something that i have just i have really come to in the last i would say six months you know i think wow i think the dragonflight really like sealed this for me is that i am just done with i want to say mmos but i'll also I'll, I'll i'll say video games as well I'll, because i think more of them are moving in this direction but i am just done with the kill thing to get higher numbers next to my gear so that i can kill slightly harder thing so that i can get slightly higher numbers so that, like just that that loop that is like kind of, that's kind of like all mmos now every mmo is like just, power progression yeah yeah i guess like the the entire purpose of why you play is to seek out more gear to progress your character like how like power progression or whatever um that stuff just doesn't really appeal to me and then when i i think on some level uh when i'm playing these games it, I, it really affected me with dragonflight um i just knew that i was going to get on this hamster wheel and I was going to go kill the bosses to get the slightly higher numbers, kill the new boss to get the slightly higher, you know, and I knew I was going to do all that. And then in a year, they were going to release World of Warcraft, you know, whatever expansion. And you you literally just start over. Like the, everything you did the previous year is pointless and stupid. And it just, it was just time. Now, if you have like a great group of friends that you're doing it with and you're enjoying it and you're like trying to push the, the, uh, you know the content and get through it fast and can be somewhat competitive i can see the appeal to that um but but i i think i'm just done with those and so every time i see an mmo i'm immediately like are are they going the world of warcraft model of end game or are they fashioning a new type of end game that's going to do something different, which in my opinion, the only MMO currently doing that is Ashes of Creation. All the rest of them have essentially the same end game. 
that right. that every, every that every other MMO goes. So Pax Day, beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, some of the animations that we've seen have looked good. Obviously, the world is beautiful. The idea behind it all is great. It probably won't be for me unless they are doing something new with the in-game. So it's, do you think, because I thought this MMO was actually going to be right up your alley. I mean, you're you're currently playing Valheim, a sandbox game. You know, uh, PAX Day, which is a sandbox MMO. You know, mm -hmm. like, and it seems to me that professions in this MMO are just as important as they are going to be probably in Ashes of Creation. Sure. So do you feel like you're kind of done with the vertical progression and you're looking for a more horizontal progression when it comes to MMOs I think now? that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah. I think okay. that's a good way of putting it. I, I, uh, or yeah, maybe I, I don't want to say that I'm just done with vertical progression. Um, but I, I just, I, I think horizontal progression is more interesting. It gives you more to do it in game, especially if they broaden that out uh, at the end game where you reach the end game, you've reached max level. That's your vertical progression, right? Right. Um, and and the way you go about I don't even want to accept, I don't okay, that's not even right right, right words. Um so the way that I that I've explained this in the past is let's take a typical World of Warcraft player. Okay, just a just an average world. We're not talking about an elite awesome player. We're not, not talking about somebody like super casual, just somebody who plays, you know, three or four hours every night with their friends, whatever. Okay. They log on to World of Warcraft and you are I, you're going to do one of two things almost all of them they're either going to do pvp and so when you do pvp like they have the battleground system and you can go in like in there like castle right. sieges or something inside of those battlegrounds or some type of a control point uh, take over. control point yes there's not there, yeah. there's only like one i think it's told Barat that does like an actual okay. siege but an actual really. siege okay um so everything that they accomplish on that night in, in in any pvp sense like winning a control point winning a p winning a battleground win, win, winning one scenario of of arena or whatever it's kind of like there's no lasting purpose to it whatsoever it's just you log in you kill the thing and you log out and and it's done mm -hmm. and then the except for you can earn a little gear now that is the one thing you are technically able to earn gear through the pvp track and that's that's great um and then if they're not doing that then they're either doing raids or dungeons they're logging in they're doing you know going kill the boss to get the higher numbers next to their gear so they can kill the next higher boss or whatever right. and so that's 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 pretty much all you're doing and again if you kill that boss what changes a number next to your gear that's that's the only thing that changes um about the game world or, or the game itself and that that has just gotten stale to me so you take an average ashes of creation player let's just say it again not a not an elite badass not not a casual just kind of an average player okay are they gonna log in and go run a dungeon do they know do they know at noon that when they log in at eight o'clock they're gonna run a dungeon i would say that they don't know that because right. when they log in maybe their nodes under siege Maybe there's a caravan that is, you know, going through their territory, and if it gets through their territory, it's going to get over to the other node, and that the materials that are on that caravan are going to level up that node and then lock your node out from leveling. You know, whatever. Like, there, it's dynamic. There's stuff happening all the time. The 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 system of systems. So, like the the suite of systems that that Stephen and and the Intrepid team have created is like designed to make perpetual dynamic end game that's not the same thing every day and you don't already know what you're going to do at noon you don't you already know what you're going to do that night that's not how that's going to work and you also don't know that it's a foregone conclusion that it's going to happen you don't know oh i'm going to log in and get 5000 wood because i have 4 hours and that's how long I, it takes me to get 5000 wood because somebody might kill you and take your wood or again, you know, so a caravan might pop up, or you might be going out to go go get wood, and all of a sudden, notice a node near you has collapsed in one of those PVP zones with the treasure hunting. That whole system, right. you know, who know? I don't know, but there's all these possibilities. There's all this stuff that's going on, and it's not just log in and do the same thing I did yesterday again today, so that I can get a slightly higher number next to my gear, so that I can do something slightly harder tomorrow. 
I feel like it's more dynamic than that. And and that's why every time I see these new MMOs, I'm like, cool, looks great. Probably not going to play it. <laughs> I'm, well, it's, I'm, I'm all in on Ashes. So what would be the driving force then for the player to keep playing? Like, and that's the, that's the thing for me in my wow brain. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is what yes. keeps a person to keep playing if there's no <coughs> parrot? Like, if, if you're not trying to get more power and you're going to stay the same power, but you're going to be doing all of these activities to remain the same, then what's really the incentive? Is it just, oh, uh, it's the fun part of it? Like, I'm just curious. I, ne I never said that you wouldn't get more power. Okay. If you, if, if you kill a raid boss, then you there's a possibility it could drop a sword or, you know, whatever. And Like, there's Correct. all kinds of ways to get more power. You know, you reach max level and there's... There's what four or is it, it's either three or four schools of magic for each augment on your secondary class, and then there's the the religious augments, and there's the right. augments related to your guild size and your node progression and all these things. So there's all these different things you can be chasing out in the world. Uh, you know, if you're a if you're a, a crafter and you're in a scientific node, you could be doing specific things to work yourself towards being able to make some weapon that would be like super unique or a piece of armor or something that don't, maybe only you are the only person on the server who can make. You know, all those types of things there's all kinds of ways to progress yourself mm -hmm. but my thing is that it's not the same thing every day and it's not a foregone conclusion that you're going to do it that's my two criteria that that really change everything else is more or less the same so you want so instead of the very structured and rigid like oh i can log in and at five o'clock we can do a dungeon because we have our own instance we don't have to worry about other people we can go in and do it now in a game like Ashes, where it is very dynamic and you can potentially have a slew of different activities to do once you log in, and it's basically your choice, you can choose to go in and say, hey, I just want to go in and do some harvesting or do some gathering, but there may be three activities you can choose from alongside doing the har harvesting or gathering that you want to do that may mm -hmm. be more advantageous. My whole thing with a system with systems like this is, is it rewarding to do those things? Because in World of Warcraft, there mm -hmm. is things that are semi-dynamic, but it's not worth doing. Like, the reward mm -hmm. isn't worth, the, is it, it isn't worth the effort. And oh, right. I, I would say that in Ashes, that's my number one fear, is I'm glad that there's going to be multiple things to do, but is the reward worth the effort and time? And and that's, right. that's the thing that I think most MMOs really fail at. But I, I say sandbox games... When it comes mm -hmm. to those kinds of things, actually do a very good job of rewarding players. Now, they try. They try. Now, with you doing Valheim, do you feel like the rewarding structure for Ashes could potentially be good enough to have this dynamic, like event system, and, and not even event system, but just there are so many things that could be very multiplicative in Ashes. Now, whether it remains to be seen if that's actually going to work and play out but the hope the drive is is that it's going to be um do you think the reward structure is going to be worth it i mean i i guess i guess the short and simple answer is i wouldn't be here if i didn't <laughs> I, don't... I mean you know, <laughs> i mean that's kind of the, like the just real simple um yeah i like okay so <clears throat> let, let's again try to try to talk about what a average player might want Right. So me as I am, I'm going to call myself an elite player, but I am a meta chasing player. Let's say that. Like I want to have the best possible character. I want to have the best possible build that I can for my character and all those types of things. Right. So yes, for me, if, if I find out that, let's say I'm a necromancer, that that's the class I end up choosing. If I find out that following a, certain religion and getting to a certain stage in that religion will give me a augment to one of my skills that will be meta it would be the best possible skill best in slot if you want to look at it that way or whatever um for for a, a particular skill that will give me all the drive and the motivation etc i need to go out and move to wherever i have to move to to become part of that religion and be, you know, one of those religious nodes and go through the questing or whatever it is, because we, you know, we don't really know a lot about the religious uh, system, so right. I'm a little bit speculative here. But um, 
that'll give me all the motivation I need. And, and an average player will have kind of the same thing. You know, an average player might be like, how can I, how can I help my node? Because, you know, we were talking about this earlier in our, in our Discord chat that, uh, you know, Ashes of Creation is putting a loyalty above guild loyalty for the first time in MMO history. Your guild loyalty has always been your highest loyalty. And in Ashes, your node loyalty is going to be higher. And I think that's going to make the game develop and, and progress in ways that we don't, yeah. we're not predicting, we're not thinking about. Um, and one of the Very ways true. that I, I'm speculating that it might do that is... Uh, players having a sense of something to do like you're talking about that sense of purpose or that uh, why do i log in every day well right. it might be because i know that if i log in i can go do whatever the guild the node needs in order for us to progress my node and maybe i can be a part of a big node a, a successful node maybe attack another node you know these types of things um are things that, that just a normal player could go do and and again what i'm talking about it with it being dynamic like uh, a good example of what I'm talking about with the dynamic and the not foregone conclusion thing. And I've noticed these are, these have become very, very popular. And I've been wondering if it's why these, these non persistent competitive, like overwatch, overwatch is a good example. League uh, Tarkov. There's a bunch of different dark and darker. There's a whole bunch of different variations of this, but when you, when you log in and you go do a match, do you know you're going to win? No. You don't know. You have no idea. No. And do you know what map you're going to be on? Maybe in some of the games, maybe some, maybe you don't. Do you know, like, is it a, is it a raid boss? Do you know what their, what your opponents are going to do? No, you don't know them. You have no idea who they are. They're going to, they're going to do, you have to, it's all dynamic and it's not foregone. And I think that Ashes is, whether it's on purpose or not, and I, and I don't know, has like found a way to slice that little aspect out of these really really popular games right now and put them into an mmo and that's what i think is going to drive people is that part of it the the it is going to be a more competitive player that comes right. to ashes if you're if you're not a competitive player if you're like eh, whatever i just want to log in and you know whatever happens happens whatever you're probably not going to enjoy ashes very much but right. the competitive people i think they're going to flock to the especially the competitive mmo players i think they're going to flock to no, absolutely. I'm, I guess for me, I'm just worried about the reward structure because it seems yeah. that the emphasis is really going to be on the professions. And I'm just curious as to like what the reward loop is for like questing. Like when you go and do quests, like you, of course you're going to get XP for completing the quest, but what else like, can you potentially get like, uh, items or clothing or weapons or trinkets or rings or, or is it do just going to be materials? Like, you know what I mean? Do you like, know the story of the dragon in Alpha One? No. So there was a dragon in Alpha One. It has this big dragon, and you couldn't even, you couldn't even, not not only could you not take one of its hits, but you couldn't even be in the area that it was in. It was so hot. Mm. And and Bardic actually, um, Bardic and Fane found a quest that was kind of like off the beaten path. It was not like part of the main quest. You had to go out and find this quest, and. If you did that quest, it gave you a recipe to make a ring of fire resistance. And it was like specific to that dragon. And so then they went back and they worked all day long to make a whole bunch of those rings for like 40 people so that 40 people could go kill that dragon. And if you were wearing that ring, you were able to kill that specific dragon. And that's wow. just Alpha 1. That's just something they put in Alpha 1. Like, that's um, cool. I suspect that, yes, there's going to be there's going to be a lot of rewards. There's going to be... I, 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 I'm hoping that instead of the World of Warcraft, here's a million quests that give very little experience and are so like uh, my the, the the example that's coming to my mind is actually a Witcher quest where you literally you go get a pan, a frying pan for a lady like she lost her frying pan in her home in her home and like you just go get her frying pan and bring it to her or something, something like that. Too, yeah. the, yes, and that's what what that I know it's a Witcher quest that I'm thinking of, but that's the the that style yeah. i am and then of course every one of them drops like little incremental pieces of like oh your gear score was 194 but we're going to give you a 196 chess piece here you go congratulations you know that sort of thing right. um i'm hoping that they are more spread out not giving you 6000 quests at one time quest chains that you follow along maybe even quest chains that have like you where you can make make choices although that's in mmos it's really hard to do because you can't affect the world 
and then the next guy comes along, does the same quest, and affects the world. It doesn't make sense. Um, right. But anyways, long quest chains, and at the end is something real. Like, not here's a slight gear score upgrade. It's like, here's a weapon that has an ability on it that you've never seen before. And now you can put that in your repertoire of weapons and then decide if that ability, like, melds well with your build or whatever. You know, something like that. That's what I am hoping. Right. Uh, that that Ash has, but there is no question that you do you do quests and get rewards for doing your quests. Actually, that was in Alpha One. Right. I, I guess the other thing about that that kind of worries me is the fact of the time dedication it's going to be to level in Ashes of Creation to go from level one to level fifty. And you know, again, there's so many things that are on paper right now that could already be changed that they just haven't told us. I mean, it was mm -hmm. like the whole note system, right? Oh, there was 103. Oh, uh, actually, correction. There is now 85, uh, right. you know, and it's like, oh, yeah, we said it was going to take, uh, you know, 68 hours every day for 45 days to potentially go from one to 50. Oh, that's all been changed now. You can probably hit max level in like two weeks. You know what I mean? Right. Like, if you play every day. Um, I, I, you know, I've been playing classic World of Warcraft, Wrath of the Lich King. Okay. Um, okay. I've been playing now for almost six weeks. I've been playing every day, Monday through Friday. I don't play on the weekends. And I play from 8 in the morning till about 5 o'clock. Now, I don't play all 8 hours. There's some days where I only play 6. I'm working during that time. So, right. on average, I'll, I might, let's just say 6 hours. I've literally, I am level 75 out of 8. Okay. Out and of eight. I've okay. been playing for 6 weeks. So, yep. a month and two two weeks. That's a long time. I mean, like, it, it took so, and this is because I know what I'm doing, right? Right. It took yeah. me, yeah. Like back back then, it took me almost three months to to yep. level from one to seventy, which was Burning Crusade at the time, um, because I didn't know what I was doing, and I used to have to like find quests that I couldn't figure out on the internet and try to be like, sure, how do you complete this quest or whatever. Um, but now with add-ons and sophistication and just my knowledge of MMOs, like you know, it's just it is what it is, like. What length of time would the weight of hitting level 50 be good? Because I'm level 75. And again, I think this is the other problem I have too, is the fact that I've played World of Warcraft for 15 years. This is not new to me. Okay. Yes. I understand yes. that. But do you think two, like three months is a good thing? For leveling in today's day and age where most mmos you can hit max level in one day so i have i have two i guess schools of thought or ways that i that i'm okay with leveling um so hmm, how do i put this i either want leveling to not exist or to take a really long time I think it's like the, the, that uh, boiling it down to exactly what it is. So in games like World of Warcraft, where, like you said, you can do it in a day. Yeah. Uh, you know, whatever it is I, I, you know, a, a day is ridiculous. Two or three days, you know, is is more realistic if you really just grind it away, um, and you're and you're not like poop socking it. Um, it seems arbitrary and pointless. Like why? Why did I have to spend all that time leveling that character up? Why couldn't they just say, here's the character, go raid with it, you know, go PvP with right. it, whatever. I don't like that. Um, so it, to, for a game like World of Warcraft, I feel like, I, especially as for as old as it is, I feel like I should just be able to log in and say, oh, I want to play a shaman today. And they're like, here's your max level shaman. Go play, have right. fun. Um, but that's because the focus of world of warcraft is the end game it is what i call a destination game the mm -hmm. point is to get to the end game ashes of creation as far as i can tell is a journey game it's not a destination game it's about the journey right and i i and that's what wow I, used to be back back in yes, the time was a yeah journey no, game. i've been watching i've been watching uh tin man or austin 
uh, games do his hardcore challenge on Twitch or whatever. Yep. And it's funny, like how how different those quests are, and how much you have to be paying attention to what you're doing, and oh, the mobs act differently. And it was more difficult, and and all of those types of things. It's much, much, much more engaging. Like I could literally watch him level all day long, and I can't watch 30 seconds of somebody were leveling in current. Yeah, current wow, it's boring. It um, is super boring. And so that I, that's my thing is that it, I I prefer that. I want it to take a while. I don't want your only goal goal to be to hit end game. It's like, okay, well now what? Now I get to kill boss to get slightly better gear so I can kill boss. Like what? You're just rushing right. to that. Um, and so I part of what I'm saying I think would be stronger, more illuminated, like make more sense in a game where you can only have one character. Because then, like the story and what your character did, like it, it's a you, it's you're living that character. And I've been saying this for a while now. That Ashes seems more like a game that you'll live in rather than one that you'll play in. Like your your character will have a place in this world and will actually have right. impact on the world. All these types of things. Whereas World of Warcraft, you just felt you know you just log in and play and log back out. Um, right. So yeah, I, me personally, I love the long time. I want to see it. I want to see people. Like, I remember so, like, because Dark Age of Camelot had this back, not now, back in the day, it took months till max level. And right. you met so many people along the way, you know, you 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 joined groups to go out into, into the Salisbury Plains and kill mobs together and stuff like that. And Stephen has talked about how he wants to, he doesn't want you to be able to get entire quests with questing, entire quests, entire levels with questing. He wants you to have to go grind. Right. Um, grind mobs and do do that sort of thing. Um, and so groups will be doing that together. That's where you're going to meet people. That's where you're going to get to know the people of your node. That's where guilds are going to get formed right. uh, on the, you know, all that, that type of thing. And, and, and so I personally am okay with it. I do understand the, the kind of flip side of like, I just want to play the end game. Like just give me the max level character already. So my thing is I'm, I'm cool with, so in world of Warcraft and wrath, there's a certain currency that you spend on end game gear, right? Mm -hmm. um, valor and uh, honor points, right? Or valor badges. I think they're badges. In Ro in Ashes of Creation, I would be cool if the leveling took three months. Make end game start at level one. Start yes. earning those end game currencies that would be considered end game currencies. As you're questing, as you're going about that's stuff. your wow brain. That's your wow brain right there. You were you were <laughs> you were so close to getting it. <laughs> no, that is your right here. No, okay, yes, make in game start at level one. You're correct. Right. But not but not give me arbitrary badges that are designed well, to increase my make it where I can help with a caravan at level one. No, for sure. And that's what I mean. Like I I guess like there because people always want the end game gear or this or that but my whole thing is is that like oh like i can have like a uh, a legendary recipe that could be used at level 50 but i can get that at level seven just off of luck yes. or chance or whatever yes. like that's yes. what i'm talking about is like yes. i don't need this arbitrary level cap to start obtaining and earning end game things and when right. it comes to activities or participating in end game events exactly like when it comes to yeah. activities like guild wars or sieges or this or that like whatever i can go in at whatever level i'm at now whether i'm going to be effective may be a different right. story but sure. i can do it i'm not limited by my level you know what i'm trying to right. say so if yeah. everybody oh, yeah. is that level then it doesn't matter you know if everybody's semi level 20 something as long as you're yes. 20 something then you're good you know what I mean? Yep. And, and that's what I'm talking about. Because a lot of games just, oh, you can't do anything cool until endgame. Like, until you're right. the arbitrary max level number of that of that MMO. Anything before that, you have to quest. That is your objective. That's what you do. Can't do anything else. Whether it's right. Lost Ark, Final Fantasy XIV, whether it's World of Warcraft. And it, it, it gets very boring. Because, again, doing the quest to quest to quest to quest and doing all these variations of quests... Like it just gets stale. So I agree. that's to me, like what I hope, you know, and I think it is definitely the goal for Ashes of Creation to actually have players feel like they're doing end game stuff at level 12, at level 21. Yeah. I, you know? I, I would almost say 
uh, we need to dispense with the idea of end game entirely. There is no end game. Right. There is just game, and yes. you play game from from very beginning, and and the entire breadth and depth of the game is available to you as soon as you as soon as you step through the gate. Completely agree. Um, that, like that's that's what I want to see, and I, I don't know that Ashes is necessarily going all 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 the way into that. Right. Um, quite that far, but I, it, it's at least taking some steps in that direction. Um, definitely taking some steps in that direction. I would like to see it where there is no like health point, strength, damage, anything, anything like that as a part of your leveling. Like a, a, between a level fifty and a level five, they have the same health. They have the same amount of stamina. That you know, all those types of things. The difference is that the level fifty is probably going to have better gear because he's been been playing and uh, acquiring more gear for longer. His augments are going to be—he's going to have way more availability of augments, so he and stronger augments, more skill points to put into the augments or whatever. So that technically, a level five could beat a level fifty if you know, like you know, he's like skill skill wise, like if he's really good, you know, right? Um, I, that that would be like really ideal for me, and I don't think they're quite going that far. But they have mentioned that, like, I forget what the number, like ten level fives could beat a level fifty or something like that. Like, it's not a situation where as soon as somebody becomes purple to you or red, you can't you can't even hit them. <laughs> That's right. not you know that. It's not that, and so I, for the most part, I think that those types of things. Are going to like I said, it's going to move us in that direction of of dispensing with the idea of an end game. Right. I I did want to go back and talk about Pax Day because we were talking about that and then we switched completely in gears. Sure. But there. I guess for me, like with Pax Day, like I saw the stuff, I saw uh Rive Genesis video. I was uh like <sighs> the thing with these MMOs, and I, I am just so jaded and skeptical of any project anytime i hear indie studio and they start making these very grand promises um quinfall right we, yeah we saw that mmo Scamfall. <laughs> i don't know if i'm gonna go that far but man i will it, it definitely has all the bells and whistles of a traditional scam the only thing is is that they haven't they haven't said oh we need your money we want your money come sign up here right. give us give us some donations or whatever whatever but it, it seems like a scam. Like all the ingredients right. are there for it to be a scam. Right. And I guess right. that's my point is like, I can't get excited for PAX Day and it could be a legitimate project that's it's legit in the works that, that's that been in the works for a while. But right. because of not even that, like the the day before last, am I saying that right? Or is, is it- I think it's just the day before. The day before, there you go. That That's it, the day before. Um, I mean, might as well be called the scam before. Like the I, scam I, before. Yeah, That's like what it it's, is. Yes. It, that to me is definitely a scam. Like I saw Kira's video on it. I don't know if you saw Kira yeah. TV's video, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that. And again, I, I. There's there's a reason why the MO community right now is so jaded. Well, and, yeah. And <laughs> it's like I look. I want to be excited, Zillin. I want to be excited <laughs> for um, for Pax Day. I want to be excited for. MMOs like Quinfall, but because of these projects that keep coming out, that keep hiring our hopes and then just dashing them to the wind, that's why I look at PAX Day and I just, okay, well, let's see when it comes out. Let's see, like, I want to see an alpha. Like, like I, I, like, what do you feel about all these, these MMOs or these games that are coming out that are either half-baked, not even real, just scamming? Like, what do you think about all that? Um, I think that my heart is, uh, fragile enough that I can only deal with one heartbreak. And so I'm just sticking with ashes <laughs> <laughs> because I can only deal with one. So I'm just not even going to buy into the other ones. Whatever, they're great. If if they release, I'm sure that I'll try them because I basically try every MMO. Um, right. But uh, yeah, I, I I I'm more or less where you are. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. make the game and release it. I I yeah. am I I I'm just not going to follow development like this. Following of Ashes development and then of course trying to cover it on my YouTube channel, which that <clears throat> makes it a little different. But doing all that and following all this, 
is I'm not, that's enough for me. I'm good. I don't need any more to follow. Like, Rive, my, okay, first of all, if y'all are watching right now and you're not subscribed to Rive Genesis, go, yeah. go, go subscribe to Rive. He's my boy. He, he's going to cover all the scam MMOs. He's got, he's got this unlocked. Yes, he um, does. But uh, I, I'm just, I don't have it in me to cover all that. It's funny that, like, when I first started my channel, the idea was to start with Ashes and then like branch into other MMOs and be able to kind of cover them all or whatever. Right. Um, there's a few different reasons why that hasn't happened. But one of the primary ones is just like, I, I don't, I don't want to like get my hopes up for this or that or that or this for all these different games to get my heart broken 76 times. So I'm going to dance with the one that brung me, I guess. <laughs> well, I, and again, you know what I mean? Like when Ashes came out, it came out on the hills of Chronicles of Valyria. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, <laughs> and and so, they basically had their Kickstarter at the same time. I know it, it's it, 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 it's uh, it's just I hate the fact that <laughs> these projects keep popping up out of the freaking woodwork like weeds, yes. and it's our job as the community to pull them out and call them out when you know when they try to sure. come up as this legitimate project. And my sure. whole thing is is that i understand like as indie studios that that are trying to form and, and create games and stuff like that but they have to understand if they are a lover of the mmo space please show proof like show something of validity to the project because right. you should know why we're jaded you should know why we're skeptical and i think it's not asking for too much you know what i mean and i think it's good that i did not see this hey go to our kickstarter page and give us money i'm glad i didn't see that you know what i mean pax day said that they have the funding you know to, to make this game and awesome i'm so glad that's the case and i i look at the game and i think well the combat needs work and stuff like that but <laughs> ashes of creations combat needs work too so who, who am i right. to talk right now um it's an alpha game you know what i mean it's still an alpha yeah. it's still being done but my whole thing is is just, i just get super pissed off like when I saw the video from Kira on the day before, like I was just like raging. I saw right. Quinfall, right? And I just raged again. And I'm like, why do these developers think they can get away with such bullshit? You know no, what I mean? They, it's not no, they do get away with it. That's like <laughs> fucking the dude from from Chronicles of Valyria won in court. He oh, got to God. keep the eight billion dollars or whatever. I can't remember his name. It's escaping me right now. But yeah, he won in court. Like they're getting away with it, and there are people. I who knows how many tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people have pre-ordered Caspian. The, the, that's, the that's Caspian. Yeah, Caspian. Uh, the, the game, you know, the the scam before or whatever. They 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 pre, people have pre-ordered that, and and I guarantee you that as soon as Quinfall has any type of way in which you can pay them money. Whether it be for merch or cosmetics or early access to the game or whatever, I guarantee you a bunch of people are going to go pay. The reason why they are doing it is because they get away with it. And the reason they get away with it is because the average person is dumb as a box of rocks. <laughs> Just, that's it. People, people, they don't pay attention, man. Do you think it's because people are desperate? Like people are literally desperate for a new MMO to come up and to come out. I don't think so. You don't think so? Because it's not just MMOs. Like the day, day before is not an MMO. It is. They're claiming it to be an MMO. Are they really? Yes. I didn't. I, I thought it was like a survival game of some sort. It's it's a it's it's survival s, but it, they said MMO. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I, That's no, why I, I don't was like. So. I, I I think that it's uh. I, I, man I, I i know it's not a popular opinion people are stupid like there's just <laughs> that's just people are dumb and they fall for crap all the time there's a reason why scam artist is a, is a job that you can actually have is because people fall for crap yeah i mean do you know how many do, like do you know how many times today i was contacted by somebody trying to scam me really three three what? times today <laughs> yes and every time i'm just like my mind is blown because because my because this is the way i see it i'm like the only reason why that person called me today is because this has worked in the past like right. people have fallen for this and it's just like 
the most simple you don't need all these com you just hey uh i'm calling from the social security administration no you're not social security administration doesn't call people you're not calling for the you know what and uh, they sent me a text message uh I, oh, crap i can't remember what it was they told me that they were gonna have to cancel it uh i made a mistake and they're they're gonna be canceling something i don't know today like i had to respond today or they're going to cancel it i'm like oh my god like that works really people are like oh crap let me <laughs> the president called me today and i didn't answer and so now i if i have to give 500 dollars, or the president's going to get mad at me you know whatever like the stupid is the, the, the nigerian print scam it's so <laughs> <Nigerian>. stupid but <laughs> it works <laughs> the reason why these companies do this is because people are stupid and they fall for these really stupid scams I'm sorry. I shouldn't be saying people are stupid. It's not nice, but it's true. You know, Hill <laughs> keeps saying that Ash's creation is a scam. He does. He does. Um, I, you know, <laughs> like I almost have like a little bit of respect for Hill. What? Like, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not with him. Like, I don't, I'm not on his side. Right. But like, he found a hill to die on and he's gonna he's gonna die on it like he he's like this is what i think i'm gonna be consistent i'm not gonna be, i'm not gonna have mixed messages and you don't he don't move the goalpost at all that that's i've ever true. seen he he that's just true. goes right in and says hey look this is never gonna release and it's a scam i, I mean richie okay, tells me i'm that not with you it, hill's his favorite commenter like he always yeah. looks forward to it. he's like man made a new video i can't see what hill's gonna post on my <laughs> comment section what hill says. man i think i think hill comment on a couple of my videos especially early on when my channel was starting to start to blow up a little bit but i just ignored it i didn't even know who he was i had no idea that like he was famous in the, in the Dude, ashes space he's and never he's never commented on any of my videos i feel offended like i feel like you should be i i feel like i've i've made enough ashes content and he has never bothered to either watch and if he has watched not even bother to comment, man. I feel like I'm messing up as an Ashes of Creation content. Yeah, creator. well, yeah, I feel you like need I'm to not. Your game up. I mean, <laughs> you know, Rive got, got got to a thousand subs, and you're still sitting over here, you know, six hundred or whatever. So, I mean, that's true. Right, clearly, you need to step your game up. <laughs> that's true. Actually, I'm at seven. I'm at seven. Oh, you're at seven hundred now. Yeah, seven oh eight, nice. seven oh seven. Nice. Something like, I don't know. You're gonna get there, and, and you know, the Rive got there by by switching, right? Like covering other things. Um, and, and, and that, if, if you're an Ashes content creator right now and you're struggling and you're like, oh, my channel won't grow and I don't know what to do, cover something else. No, I, you know, right now I, I created a video and I think I talked to you about this. I may, may have not talked to you about this, but I made a video on the 64 class system, right? Had my okay. script done. I recorded it and I watched it and I'm like, this is a very negative video. And I'm like, okay, let's look at the script. Let's see how I can be a little bit more unbiased. Cause I, you know me, I hate the 64 class system. Like the more I go into it, the more I just don't like it. I think, I think it's already a failure off the start. Like we're already off to the, off to a failure. Um, okay. But right now, like when I look at Ash's content just right now and what's being consumed by YouTube, by YouTubers or by, by P the audience of YouTube, no one's really watching Ash's content right now. No, Narc's videos are down. Richie's videos are down. They're the two biggest content creators for the for the space. So I'm thinking like, and right now I still probably need to work more on my 64 class video. But it's like okay, I, I release. You know, the 64 class system is gonna work. Okay, like this the game's not even out. You know, mm -hmm. like like no, what, you're you're what, exactly where I am, man. I just and uh, again, I want to make. I want. I am gonna make the video. It is gonna release. But the right. sentiment right now in the player base, the video, it, even if I do lean it more towards neutral, it, it's it's not going to move the needle. Like if you if you're excited about the 64 class system, my video isn't going to sway you either way. So I see I say to myself, what's the point of this video? What value is it adding to me? There is no value right now. So that's why I, I didn't want to put it out. I am right now scripting a video on MMOs aren't dying you've just outgrown them. That's like yep. a working title. Yep. And because and we could talk about that a little bit, you know what I mean? Hey, all my viewers that watch my one V one here, we'll, we'll, we'll go into it. 
you'll get a preview as to like my thoughts on it. But I feel like the MMO crowd is an aging one, right? We grew up mm -hmm. in our 20s or even in our teens with this genre. And it's been 15, 20, 25 years for some people. And now we're, we have families, we have kids, we have responsibilities that we didn't have. I feel like MMOs were traditionally a time sink. It was supposed to like, it was supposed to engross you into this world to immerse yourself in and to spend time in. But now we have responsibilities. We want that immersion, but yet we want all these caveats with it now because we're, we're dads and we have families and we have wives and, you know, nagging and I can only play for a couple hours a day and stuff like that. So it's like, we want all these caveats to make these almost like, um, preheated meals, right? That, Hey, I only got this window of time. So I need this, this, I need it to be done within this window. And I want no one else. Like if there is the game that keeps going, I want everyone else to be able to not exceed me, even though I only have this window. Which is why you have a lot of clones like World of Warcraft where it's a drop in, drop out, because that's what the base is at this point. That's all the time they have. There isn't an MMO where you can really sink your teeth into and and play. You know what I mean? And a lot of M old MMOs were that, but we're not 18 or 20 anymore. You know what I mean? So I feel like, dude, the majority of people that I know right now that can classify themselves as MMO gamers aren't even playing an MMO. Like yeah. they're, they're literally just wanting to play an MMO, but no MMO is good enough. No MMO has, and again, it's not talking crap about those people, but it's like, I used to play Halo. I was a very heavy first person shooter game back in 2004 to 2006 and seven. It's like saying right now that I classify myself as a first person shooter player, even though I literally haven't played a first person shooter in probably over <laughs> like what, 12, 15 years. You know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's weird. Do you know what I mean? And I, I, I want to know your thoughts. Like, do you think people have outgrown MMOs and they just can't face the reality of it? Or do you no. think, do you think the fact that the genre has just gone too soft, too convenient and that's why the appeal of the current MMO just, it just isn't doing it. Yeah. I, <clears throat> so, so while we're on this content talk, uh, what one thing that I've been considering doing, and I've been, I just so the, the, uh, the audience knows, I bought a better camera that won't freeze like this one is done. If you happen to actually be watching this, which I don't know why you would watch it instead of just listen to it. Hey, if you have, they like our you faces. See, <laughs> if you see my cameras frozen a few times, um, I have a new one, and you know, there's some. I'm not going to get into all the technical, but there's a reason why it's not up and running yet. But once it gets running, um, one of the things I was thinking about doing is doing response videos to Ash's creators. So instead of doing like the reaction like you did, where you like put yourself in the side and like you watch their video and then comment on it, like I'll just watch their video and then I'm going to tag them and be like, response to at Vladis, you're not, the MMOs aren't dying, you're just outgrowing them or whatever. And then I'm going to say, hey, look, the link, the link, the descriptions, there's down in the description. You can go watch their video if you want to see. Here's my like 30 second recap of their argument. And then here's my response to that. Hmm. So, and, so it's like piggybacking on uh, what other people have done. It also highlights creators, lets people say, because right. obviously I'll be like, hey, go give them a sub, you know? So it's like a little bit of there. Um, so part of me wants to like hold my thoughts on what you're saying until you make your video so I can make my response video. Um, but in general, I think in a very, very, like you were, the, what, the way you said it was more simplistic than I would say it, but more or less the genre, I, I think the genre hasn't grown. It hasn't aged. It's stayed exactly the same since 2004 when World of Warcraft came out and people are tired of it. That's what I, I think it did. It's just, nobody's innovated in this space in 20 years. Nobody. It's the same crap. Okay, wait. Wildstar innovated and failed miserably. <laughs> so, well, um, I feel like it but, has innovated, but it innovated in the wrong direction. In, and I was going to say, in, in the ways in which it has innovated, it's gone in the wrong way. Right. Um, and then you look at games like Eve, 
<clears throat> Eve is a like Eve is a great example of a lot of what I talk about from a, from an MMO perspective because I know I'm like the old fogey in the in the ashes creator space and everybody's like oh Zilla just wants it to be like the 1920s and um to some, to some degree, they're, they're right <laughs> yeah well they want me to go back to the MMOs that people were playing in the 1920s that, that's what uh, oh, that's what I would like sure, um, for sure. That, that's my preference um, but Eve is like it's an MMO and it like exists in this little space right over here and nobody's willing to talk about it. Like when, when creators start talking about MMOs and giving their opinions on MMOs, stuff, they're like, we're just going to pretend Eve doesn't exist. Because Eve like, flies truth. in the face of everything that I say. Every argument that I make, Eve can like counter. But so I'm just going to pretend it doesn't exist over here. Right. Um, and, and so Eve is an example of somewhere where they did actually innovate in the space. They made in the space. <laughs> That's a pun. Uh, so <laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> So, uh, anyways, it, it's an example of somewhere where they did innovate and they've created like their own little community and, you know, it, it's, it's been financially solvent for a long, long time. They have regular updates. There's new things going on there all the time. Sometimes things that are so massive happen there that like all the, the tech sites write stories about it. Like when big wars happen and like millions of dollars worth of ships get blown up and stuff like that, um, because they have innovated, but but especially the the fantasy the high fantasy mmo that genre is just it's exactly the same it's the same game it's been uh plus uh plus a bunch of convenience and microtransactions like <laughs> pay to win in, in a lot of cases um so yeah i i, I think it's just stale I, I i i think it's stale the majority like I'm in that that realm of the people you're just not talking about. I am an MMO player. I've been playing MMOs forever. I'm not currently playing an MMO. Now, I will tell the audience that I have been sucked back into SWOTOR and i starting with my raid team back in <laughs> six days. Um, you can tell how excited I am about it. Um, but so, yeah, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> just to add on to that, <clears throat> I've been playing WoW, right? And I'm, I'm yeah. taking a break from, from retail WoW because we've, we did the raid. We got ahead of the curve. We did our thing. Right now, people are burnt out. We're not going to get a new raid probably until June, which is like three more months from now. Well, You're making a point for me. <laughs> That's exactly but, what I'm talking about with the the whole point about about how the games are. Like people no, just for like, sure. oh, I did it. And I'm out. Yeah, I'm, I'm out. out. Like, but yeah. I'm I'm still playing Wrath. I'm still playing an MMO. I'm still playing sure. old because yeah, you're going back to when it was fun. Well, I'm going back to to when because I'm I'm <sighs> testing something out. Because okay. what, what I originally started playing is I wanted to see if the interest would still be there for me to, to level from 1 to 80 and to, right. to go through that time investment and to quest and to grind and <coughs> excuse me and do the whole rigmarole, you know? And so far, like, I've been playing a warlock. I've actually been having fun. Like, I'm like, it feels rewarding to hit a level because it does take a while for you to level mm -hmm. and to earn that extra talent point to pop in and to get more powerful and to feel more powerful and to have more spells and more powerful spells. Um, it's, it's been feeling really nice. Um, but I, I think, you know, a lot of the, a lot of my close friends that aren't playing MMOs, I, I feel like it's because they want the fast food style of MMO. And even though there's plenty of them to choose from, you know, it's like, well, when you've had McDonald's every single day for the past two weeks, like you want something different. But when you've tried all the other restaurants, you're left almost like, like you still want it quick, but you want something different. But, and that's the, that's the thing that I've seen. And it's like, they think that the riot MMO is going to be their new fix or Ashes of creation could be their new fix. And I feel like those people aren't going to be pleased no matter what. Like, and I feel like they're either going to try to find a fault with it because they're looking for this perfect MMO with the perfect combat, the perfect monetization, the perfect graphics, the perfect immersion, the perfect leveling structure. And I think if you are that person, you're literally setting yourself up for failure because there's going to be sure. things even about Ashes of Creation that I will not like. Not saying that sure. I, I, I will dislike. I probably will absolutely hate. Like there's going to be things because there's things about World of Warcraft that I absolutely hate. 
Um, sure. But I make those exceptions because the fundamental thing for me about MMOs is community. The reason mm -hmm. why you are playing SOTOR is because you're not playing SOTOR by yourself. You're not just going to go into some pub right. and raid. You're playing because a group of your friends are playing. And that is the fundamental antithesis of MMOs is community. Right. Is, sure. is is the most basic MMO could actually be a lot of fun when you're playing with your friends. Yeah. And I think that's the whole thing of my video is I feel like that's why I still play a game like WoW because Axiom, the community that I'm in, it's just a lot of fun to play WoW with those people. I enjoy sure. the I enjoy the MMO space when I am playing with them. If I wasn't with them and I was by myself, man, I, I don't know what the hell I'd be doing right now, to be totally honest right. with you, which right. is why community is so important and why the single serving MMOs aren't working. So I don't know. I'm sure you have stuff to say. <laughs> man, you know me. I always got stuff to well, I know, say. I kind of rambled on for a while, but I was very passionate. I, it, it, I, no, and I, I'm I'm with you. I The only thing that I think that you're missing, and I, while you were talking, I was trying to figure out how to tweak your analogy to make it um, a, a little simpler, and I couldn't find a, a really good way to do it. But so I'm going to do it this way. Let's say, let's say that that uh, you're you're 20 years old, 18 years old, whatever. You're going to college, and you get in your college, and you realize, oh crap, I have a lot of free time. I have a boatload of free time, and I got to find a way to fill it. And somebody comes over one day with an erector set, and they're like, "Dude, check this out. You could build all this crazy stuff." And so you sit down and you start figuring out, oh, this piece connects this way and this piece connects this way. And so you spend your entire, like the next four years are a blur. They just blow by because every time you're not in school or at some type of social function, you're right. with this erector set and you're figuring out and it is like, it's, it's a new world and everything. It's amazing. Right. Right. And then you get out of, get out of college and you're going along or whatever. And, and you still are playing with, with this erector set. You, you kind of understand it now. Like it, it, it doesn't take up all your time. You can kind of do it without having to, to take up all your time. Right. And then somebody comes along and they're like, Hey, I have a new erector set for you. And you're like, okay, cool. Let me try it. And this erector set, it comes pre-built and you just like hang decorations on it. It gets easy. There's nothing to it. And you just, whatever. And then over the next like 15 years, people come keep coming out with new erector sets and they're just easier and easier and easier and easier to the point that by the time you're done, by the time that 15 years is over, they're, the, the, they're just, it's just an erector set in a box. Like whatever you're building is already built and you just buy it pre-built and set it on your shelf. Right. And then someone comes along and they're like, hey, I've just invented a new building set none of the pieces are like any of the pieces you've ever used before. It's all brand new. You're going to have to spend the next five years figuring it out and, and going, you know, fig, trial and error and figuring things just to make the simplest thing. You would immediately go back into that, like transfixed. All I do is eat, sleep, shit, take care of my family and an erector set, you know, this new erector set. That's the MMO space. That's what it is. It was this complicated, wonderful thing that took, years to unpack and figure everything out and then people started going let's make it easier and easier and easier and easier and it's to the point now where it's it, it you know like i said you're you're buying a fully built thing and just sitting on your shelf it's not even it's not even really complicated and that i think that is the reason why your friends who they're, they're not making excuses to not play the mmo they get into the mmo and realize the same thing that they realized for every MMO going back further and further and further and further back, which is, I've already done this. This is super easy. I quit this in the last time because I realized it was super easier. And then once you start doing that, it gets easier and easier and easier to quit because you more quickly realize, oh yeah, I quit because this is the simplest crap and I can do this in my sleep. What am I doing here? I think that's what it is. <clears throat> I don't know. I We're already at the hour mark, but I just want to say this before we close <laughs> is... A lot of my friends that are playing retail, when they tried to go back to Wrath, they said it was, it it was too old, it, it's it's janky, it it takes too much of my time. I I just I didn't want to do it, and I'm like, 
but even if you dedicate like an hour a day, you know what I mean? You can still, you know, we won't accomplish a lot. Right. But it's still, I think a, a very meaningful progression path compared to what's, you know, on live games. But I think a lot of people have been almost conditioned to not like the old way to not yeah, you, absolutely. like your whole analogy of rector sets. Like they, they're used to it pre-built. They're not used to it being like, I got to start like from scratch. Like what? Like, I don't want to like put this thing together myself so, again. That's stupid. The one I, I've actually been tr trying to figure out a way to script a video. And I, one of the reasons why I've worked really hard on the script is because I haven't found the right title. And I tend to like find a good title and then work backwards. Um, but it was something along the line of when is old, when is old school too old school or something something like that. Right. And so yes, with World of Warcraft Classic, like you don't have the graphical upgrades, you don't have the quality of life upgrades. Um, Very true. It, like there are certain quality of life upgrades that should be there, right. and there are certain ones that shouldn't. The right. ones that make it make you know th like that sort of thing. So if World of Warcraft Classic released. And it had the graphical upgrades. It was it, it had all the prettiness, you know, that, that goes along with it. And it had this little feature and that little feature, and the UI was easy to move around. And you know, these little things, you, th those people would might stay. Although you can make the argument that they've already gone through those quests, they know that story. They don't need to like, you know, that part of it. So it's like yeah. you, you might need an actual new set. That's why I was talking about like the pieces are new. Right. The concept is the same. But it's new pieces to the Erector set. They don't fit together the same way. And they come in different lengths. And now there's some new shapes. But it's still an Erector set. But right. it's a new Erector set. And it's still difficult. I think that's what they need. And that's why I think that Ashes of Creation is going in the right way. Um, and and maybe... Man, I hate saying this out loud. It, it, I, there, there's just no chance. There's just no chance. If Throne of Liberty is not just the unbelievably like most predatory pay to win crap you've ever seen in your life it also is kind of in that that vein but everything else is just carbon copy of the crap we've already played except for we don't really know what we're going to get from right although they have basically said they're not going to reinvent the wheel so i don't know but yeah that, that i i think that if the if your if your friends could go back and play world of warcraft classic with some of the modern conveniences but it's not the stuff that makes it pre-built and on your shelf i think they i think they need to work. we'll see well, Zillin, dude, thank you so much. I, it, it's yeah, it always sucks because I feel like I I want to have like a longer discussion with you, but I'm trying to keep these things to like an hour. Sure, you know, sure. to keep it more like bite sized and just you know more consumable. But you know, I could talk to you for freaking hours about yeah, MMOs. we, we, like, we, we have go, oh, we have, we can go on and on and on. But Zillin, I almost feel like every time you hop in my Discord, I should just hit the record button and then just stop. It. It's very true. A one v one after hours. <laughs> yeah, after hours, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! But dude, Zillin, dude, I really, really appreciate you coming yeah. on, on very short notice just to come on and have a chat. And this was actually, I think, this was a very good discussion because we talked about a lot of things that I literally have not talked about with yeah. in, in a lot of the other 1v1 so i think this is this was a very very great discussion if you guys at home like this discussion please hit that like button you know uh subscribe to the channel for more talks like these i talk uh general mmo design you know new mmos old mmos just everything mmo discussion this is where you find it at here at the 1v1 podcast um zillin where can people find you at hopefully making YouTube. ashes content dot com slash zillin i guess yeah just look for zillin on twitch and youtube i'm there x-i-l-l-i-n that's me awesome all right guys well i hope you enjoyed this uh episode my name is vladis with vladis gaming that is zillin over there and we will see you guys on the next one later suck guys. it red beard <laughs> <laughs>